Good morning, good morning, my Zalwane. Hey, we are together once again just praising the Lord. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. And here we are once again. This is the day the Lord has made. And hey, when God sat down to make this day, he knew you. Because he says, I knew you before you conceived in your mother's womb. And I already had great plans for you. So all those plans are coiled in the days that the Lord makes for us. And here we are Wednesday morning. It's a new day. And this is the day the Lord has made. Nobody made this day except the Lord. And the Lord made it specifically for you and for me, Mzalwan, to make sure that we become the best that we can be in this day, to make sure that we achieve our goals, we achieve our dreams, we achieve our plans in this day. God made it for us so that today we be victorious, we be overcomers, we be giants that God sees us to be. God has made this day for me and Zalwana so that we are blessed coming in, we are blessed going out, we are blessed in the city, we are blessed in the country. Wow, because, you know, God wants to touch each and every aspect of our lives. It doesn't matter where you are. That's why the Word of God says you are blessed in the city if you are staying in the city. You are blessed in the country if you are staying in the country. So you are blessed in Zalwana. You don't have a choice but to be blessed. And we thank God for that, and we give God the praise, the glory, and the adoration. Welcome once again this morning. I welcome you to our third day of our series. And I say sons and daughters of Mana Tabernacle, our friends on Facebook, our friends on YouTube, I welcome you to Joy Comes in the Morning this morning. And I say we're going to have a great time. And allow me to appreciate my spiritual parents and my trainers, Pastor Strike and Pastor Joylene, who have once again given me this opportunity to come and stand before you, the heritage of our God, to come and stand before you, the people of God. Even though I'm sitting down, remember, I'm Zalwani, inside I'm standing. I'm one person who loves to stand, but if I have to sit down, I'm sitting down. But inside, Hey, I am standing. So may the Lord bless us this morning as we are going to once again share the word of God together. We have been speaking about defending what the Lord has given us, defending what the Lord has put in our trust. Because the word of God says, I knew you before you were conceived in your mother's womb. I already ordained you, which means everything that pertains to your life, great and wonderful things God has already ordained for us. And we need to defend that. We need to rise up and know who we are in Christ and know who we are because our Lord laid down his life for us. And I want to I want us to go to our scripture, the, our base scripture that we're running with uh, uh, this week, which is our second Samuel chapter. 23 and we are reading a verse 11 and it reads as follows from the uh, uh, the new king james version today i'm reading from the new king james version. it reads as follows and after him was shama the son of aji the hararite the philistines had gathered together into a troop where there was a piece of ground full of lentils so the people fled from the philistines but he stationed himself in the middle of the field and defended it and killed the philistines so the lord brought about a great a victory verse 12 once again but he stationed himself in the middle of the field and defended it and and killed the philistines so the lord brought about a great victory i love this verse i love the second part where it says the Lord brought about a great victory because God saw the determination of this man. God saw the resilience of this man. God saw that this man is standing up and is not allowing anybody to temper with what the Lord has given them because this was to be their harvest. This was to be their sustainers. This was to be their food. And the enemy wanted just to take it just like that. But this man says, you are not going to take it just like that. You are not going to take it and me lying down. But we are going to, we, we, we will fight. And I will fight you and I will defend what is mine. And the Bible says the Lord brought about a great victory. And that is exactly Zalwana, what God wants to do in your life. God wants to give you a great victory. There is nothing in Zalwana that you have that the Lord has given you that has come by mistake. There is nothing that you have from Zalwana that the Lord has given you that you cannot defend because whatever God has given you he has also given you the 
ability to defend. He has also given you the strength to defend. He, that health that you have, Umzalwan, that life that you have, Umzalwan, God has given you the ability to defend it. But you need to rise up and defend it, Mzalwane. You cannot defend it, Mzalwane, in a defeated position. But you need to stand up and say, enough is enough. You need to stand up and say, this shall not be taken away from me. You need to stand up and say, this is mine because the Lord has given me. And you stand and I can assure you, Mzalwane, that God is going to bring about a great victory. And when God brings about great victory, he doesn't do it in silence. He doesn't do it in hiding. But he does it in full view of people because God creates a table for you in the midst of your enemies. He sets up that table. God specializes in lifting you up when the enemy thought he had victory over you, when the enemy thought he was just going to come and take. But hey, the enemy finds a surprise. And I want you to prepare a surprise for the enemy, Mzalwari. As you rise up and say, enough is enough. Prepare a surprise for the enemy, Mzalwari. And defend your family. And defend your children. And defend your marriage. And defend what the Lord has given you, Mzalwari. You need him, Zalone, to rise up and defend what God has given you. And I've got an interesting scripture that I want us to share from today. And it is in Numbers chapter 27. And we are going to be reading verse 1 to verse 7. I love, I love this scripture. This tells, this scripture talks about these young ladies that were resilient. These young ladies that demanded what belonged to them. And it reads as follows. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Then came the daughters of Zelophehad, the son of Heva, the son of Gilead, the son of Machiah, the son of Manasseh, from the families of Manasseh, the son of Joseph. And there were the names of his daughters, Mala, uh, Noah, Hog, Hog, Hola, Milka, and Tiza. And, and they stood before Moses, before Eleazar the priest, and before the leaders and all the congregation by the doorway, of the tabernacle of meeting saying these are their words our father died in the wilderness but he was not in the company of those who gathered together against the lord in company with Korah. but he died in his own sin and he had no sons why should the name of our father be removed from among his family because he had no son give us a possession among our father's brothers Give us a possession among our father's brothers. So Moses brought their case before the Lord. And the Lord spoke to Moses and said, The daughters of Zelophehad speak what is right. You shall surely give them a possession of inheritance among their father's brothers and cause their, the, the inheritance of their father to pass to them. Hallelujah. We thank God for the reading of his word. Father, we thank you for your word. And my dear God, we pray that, Lord, may this word be revealed to us. God, the Holy Spirit, think through my mind and please speak through my lips as we're going to share about this scripture. We thank you, Father, this morning and we praise your name in Jesus' mighty name. Hey, my brothers and my sisters, I love this passage of scripture. Here we see young women that stand and decide that they are not going to let this pass by. They are not going to let the law just take things from them. But they decide and they say, we are going to rise up. And they rise up. And they go to the servant of God, Moses. And they say, Moses, give us our possession. Give us what belonged to our father. Give us what is rightfully ours. They rise up. And this was not normal in those times. The ladies were not allowed to have any possession. They were not allowed to have any inheritance. Because, you know, you know, even in our cultures, when a lady, a lady is married, they say, no, a lady belongs to where she is going to be married. And she not, does not usually get from the inheritance of the father. But we see here these ladies changing the status quo. They change it up to the fact that it's even influential till today. They rise up, they say, give us our possession. And Moses looks at this and says, hey, this is not normal. This is more than I can hang it. This is more than I can do. Let me take it to the Lord. And Moses takes it to the Lord and presents their case to the Lord. And the Lord says, yes, they are right to defend what is theirs. They are right to call upon what they believe is theirs. And God brings about a victory in them. He gives them victory not just for them, 
But the law changes going forward because of these ladies. And I want to say to you, Mzalwani, there is things that belong to you, which now you have decided, no, this shall not be mine. This I shall let pass. This I shall allow to go. I want to say to you, Mzalwani, like these ladies, rise up, Mzalwani, call upon the name of the Lord and defend what belongs to your family and defend what belongs to your lineage and defend what belongs to what belongs to you, what God has created for you, and defend it, Mzalon, because if you don't, it shall be taken away from you, Mzalon, because the enemy thinks it does not belong to you, because the enemy thinks you do not qualify to have it. And I want to say to you, Mzalon, don't believe in that language, don't believe in that message, but call upon the God of heaven who is ready to answer. Call upon the God of heaven who is listening and cry before him like these ladies went to Moses and Moses brings the case to the Lord and the Lord changes things. God in Zalana is about changing things for you. Do not sit down and say, I am a woman, I cannot do this. This must be done by men. Do not sit down and say, I do not qualify. Do not sit down and listen to people that have said you will not amount to anything. Do not sit down and listen to people that have told you that you do not qualify to dream such dreams. Do not sit down in Salon and listen to those, but rise up in Salon. Call upon the name of the Lord. Bring your case before the Lord. Bring your case before the King of Kings. Bring your case before the Master who will righteously judge. And I can assure you, Mzalwani, you will rise to the top. You will rise to the top, Mzalwani. And they will look at you and they will say, what happened? Because we know that he was poor. Even the poor called him poor. People there will look at you and they will say, what happened? And hey, those that know your story, they will say, he has been with Jesus. She has been with Jesus. That family has has been with Jesus. That family has served the Lord. You need to rise up, Mzalwan. You need to rise up, Mzalwan. Pagama, Mzalwan. Pagama. Ungafumeli. It is silika satane. Pagama, Mzalwan. You amount to something because God said, I created you. I made you in my own image before you were conceived in your mother's womb. I knew you because God said that about you, Mzalwan. You need to rise up, Mzalwan. It is not finished with you. Hey, God is not done with you, Mzalwan. He is waiting for you. He is waiting for you to make that call. He is waiting for you to present your case. But you need to rise up, Mzalwan, and present your case. You need to rise up and defy the odds. The odds might be against you. The odds might be saying this and that about you. I want to say to you, Mzalwan, rise up even when your body is refusing. You deserve to have good health. You deserve to have divine health because Jesus Christ, as he was whipped, those whips that were, were, were whipped on his back, those stripes, Mzalwan, were about your healing. You deserve it, Mzalwan, but you need to rise up and lay a claim, Mzalwan, your poverty, Mzalwan, that you are in, you do not deserve to be there because Jesus Jesus nailed it on the cross, Mzalwa. But you need to lay a claim. You need to bring your case before God. You need to bring your case before God. When we go to the court of law, when the lawyer stands for you and brings your case to the judge, the lawyer calls the ex from the book of law. They caught the ex. And I want to say to you, Mzalwa, the word of God is given to you as your ex that you must court before the law. And make your case. Make your case, Imsalwan. These ladies, they make their case, Imsalwan. They say, Our father was not in the company of those that defied the Lord. Our father was not in the company of those that undermined the Lord. And the Lord says, Yes, they are saying it right. 
Yes, they deserve their inheritance. You deserve your inheritance, Msalwan. You deserve your inheritance, Msalwan. Change your mind, Msalwan. Change your mind, Msalwan. Move from a position of defeat. Move from a position, Msalwan, that says you do not qualify for this. This is for special people. I want to say to you, Msalwan, you are a special person before God. You are alive to this day because God still has a great plan for you. Because God still still has to, but he wants to do great things through you. But if you sit down, Mzalwane, sit down and join a band of pity party makers, Mzalwane, I want to say to you, Mzalwane, you will not go anywhere. You will not go anywhere, Mzalwane. You have a mark. You have to leave a mark, Mzalwane, right here. My, my, you see, when we read from the word of God, we see Shama leaving a mark. When we read from the word of God, we see these ladies leaving a mark. We see Esther leaving a mark. Mzalwane, you are not small. You are not irrelevant, Mzalwane. But God has a plan for you. And he needs you to rise up and make sure that, Mzalwane, you put on the forward gear. Make some movement, Mzalwane. Make some movement. Nyagaza, Mzalwane. Nyagaza, Mzalwane. Nyagaza, rise up. God has got great things for you. Rise up, Mzalwane. Shake off. That blanket of baking in Zalwane has Patamias threw it away. Shake it off from Zalwane and rise up. Because there is a great plan that God has for you. And that plan will only be achieved in Zalwane when you rise up. And the Lord is ready to bring about a great victory in your life. But you need to stand up and defend what God has put in you. And defend what God has preserved for you. And defend what God has trusted you with already. God has trusted you with your life. Defend him, Zalwan, in your life. Do not throw your life around. Do not throw your life to the enemy. Defend your life, um, Zalwan. Defend your body. Defend your health. Defend your children, um, Zalwan. Defend your career. Defend your business, um, Zalwan. Rise up, um, Zalwan. It took Esther and Mordecai only three days after Haman had been casting poor for 12 months. The Lord is ready for you, um, Zalwan. He will not be long. He will not be delayed. When you call upon him, he answer. When these ladies go before Moses, God did not say, come back to me after 12 months. But God answered there and there. And he said, Divide, divide a position for them. That is the Lord that we serve, Mzalwa. That is the Lord that we, we serve. That is the name that we answer to. The name of Jesus Christ, the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords, who is ready to lift you up who is ready to take you to another level. But you need to rise up and know who you are. You need to rise up in the name that is above every name. And I hope, Mzalwane, you have been blessed this morning. I hope, Mzalwane, you have been challenged to shake off those fears, to shake off that garment of, of, of begging and rise up, Mzalwane, to what you have been destined to be. Because you are destined for greatness. You are destined for power. You are destined for authority. You are supposed to rule. You are supposed to lead, Mzalwan. That is what God has made for you to be. Because he gave you dominion over all the works of his hands. Everything that you can see, Mzalwan, is out of the hands of the Lord. It doesn't matter who made it, but they made it out of the inspiration of what God has already made. So, Mzalwane, you've got dominion over those. Rise up, Mzalwane. Be ready to overcome. And hey, Mzalwane, I hope you are blessed. And let me pray with you, Mzalwane. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father, for the time that we've had. And Lord God Almighty, we thank you that this time has made us realize that, my God, even as these ladies were... Lord, there, my God, not even uh, supposed to approach the servant of God. But my dear father, they rose up, Lord, and they demanded what belonged to them. And Jehovah, we see you, Lord, changing things, Lord, because of their commitment and their resilience. We see you, Father, changing the law. Mighty God, we thank you. The Lord Shama rose. And my dear God, you brought about a great victory. Esther rose, Lord. You brought about a great victory. Father, we choose to rise. And Lord, we choose to rise. Bring about a great victory, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we thank you, Father. We give you the praise. We give you the honor. We glorify your name, O oh God. Oh, my brother, my sister, I hope you are blessed. See you at the top because that is where you belong. You've got a greater God in, in you than the devil that is out there in the world. I hope you are blessed. Have a great day. See you again. God bless you.